Welcome to master number three lock. I got it today from a German lock picking colleague and he was wondering why this lock opens so easily. Mm, he said he just needs to set one pin and then he's done. <laughs> yeah, that's the bidding. One, two, three, four pins and all different heights. Could be a too short and a too long key pin, perhaps, but then there are at least Two more pins. It does work. Um, yeah, but uh, he's right. It picks really easy. So I apply tension here on the open side of the keyway and go in with a 15,000 Peterson hook. Moderate or light tension. Go in and just rake the pins without uh, thinking much and it opens. Well, to see if this really needs to set one pin, I will clamp in the vise, apply some more tension and uh, pick it very, very carefully. So let's see how that goes. So here it's clamped in the vise. And yeah, if a lock opens that easy, could be one of two reasons at least, um, if the lock isn't faulty. Either the pins are too short or too long, so they clear the shear line um, without the need of setting them or it has just so poor tolerances that uh, slightly touching with the shank of the pick um, makes the pin to uh, reach the shear line and to be set. So let's find out. I make sure that all pins are free. I apply tension from the uh, pin side so I have enough room for my pick to navigate. And I use um, a hook like this, also 15 thousandths, Peterson hook number 7 it is. And I want to see if I can feel the pins individually and say what's going on. So let's see how that works. Okay, pin 1 is springy, pin 2 is binding a little bit, got a click and it's set. Pin 3 is binding heavily, I have to release tension a little bit to set it. Got it? Hmm. That was at least two pins. So let's try that again. Oops, I try to be really careful with the pins. I apply a lot of tension not to set the pins accidentally. So pin one is really... Ah, when I touch pin one, it sets and then it becomes springy again. So I think there isn't much to, to pick on pin 1. Let's see. That's pin 1. It's a very very long key pin. So if at all you have to pick it just, just a hair. And by touching it under tension I think that's just enough. So that's mystery number 1 solved. Pin 1 is more or less ineffective. Then we have pin 2 binding. Got it. Pin 3 is binding. It's binding really, really heavy. And we've got it open. So, looks like the last pin does not need to be set. And it's a very short key pin. <clears throat> Could be that it's too short and that also the driver pin is uh, inside the plug and uh, clears the shear line at the at the place where it meets the spring. So we can try something. We can try to uh, work on the last pin first. How about that? So pin one, pin two, pin three, and that's pin four. Uh, it's really heavily binding. I have to release tension. Okay, <clears throat> I felt a little click and okay, we are already open. So, <laughs> it really seems like that this lock has extremely poor tolerances and a bidding that makes it really easy to pick. So pin 1 and pin 4 is um, basically um, ineffective. So let's try that again. I want to 
overset the last pin. I release tension and really try to set it high up and apply tension. So maybe I've overset number four. So one is loose, two is loose, three is loose. Okay, now I've managed to set pin uh, four a little bit higher. So maybe I can set it even higher so that it again clears the shear line at the expected place. Maybe I set it too high. I think that was it. All right. <clears throat> yeah, so pin four. Okay, you heard a click. That was pin four. I said it. Pin one is springy. Pin three is binding. Got it. Now one, and I might have touched two accidentally, and it opens again. Yeah, looks like that these master locks are really, really easy to open. <clears throat> Not only because of the poor tolerances, but also because of a bad bidding, so that we have too short and too long key pins, making them basically ineffective. All right, Kai, thank you very much for this funny lock and everybody else. Thanks for watching, happy picking, and bye-bye.